What's up, everyone? Welcome to Planet Xbox Podcast. I think we're at episode 37. This is Cinema Saga's Hellblade 2 edition. Uh, the game's out. The reviews are out. Everybody's talking Everything's about it. Everything's out. Everybody's seen it. Everybody's played it. Everybody's commented on it on Twitter. Yeah, <laughs> yes, yes. It's definitely the talking point. You know what I mean? It's a shout to Xbox to get everybody talking about gaming. Good, bad, and the ugly, man. Attic, how are you doing? Pretty good. Shout out to the people on Twitter talking about Hellblade longer than it take them to beat it. Yeah, right. <clears throat> um, how, uh, I'm going to say, how, uh, when did you finish the game? Um, Saturday. Saturday? Okay, I think I, <laughs> I think I did it Friday? Maybe Friday? Friday into Saturday, maybe. Um, the game, you know, came out. Uh, yeah, and just to clarify, I got a review code for it. Yeah, I didn't I get a review. I don't know if I'm supposed to say that like here too. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I didn't get a review uh, code. Uh, I got it courtesy of Attic through Xbox Game Share. Um, but, you know, happy to be a, a Game Share ben- beneficiary of someone who gives access to uh, some of these games. I would like. So well, I mean, there's there was years where you know before IOP started come p- mm-hmm. putting up the uh, the the bill when it comes to like gaming related. Yeah. There was years where you, you was literally buying every game, like every yeah, game yeah. just about. <laughs> yeah, that's that's why I don't um do um the game uh do the game um uh that's why i take it full advantage of game pass i can't be buying games like that anymore y'all i'm looking at the camera and like damn this guy my edge up is jacked up oh my goodness oh man yeah i might have to wear a hat um so the embargo uh was at 1 a.m pacific 4 a.m eastern um there was concerns because of the so close embargo date to release and Ninja Theory's PR released, like, you know, those messages. You know how when a game gets canceled or delayed, it was, like, on one of those message boards? But it was just, mm-hmm. like, a thank you message. <laughs> uh, the game uh, landed at an 80... I, honestly, I, I think... Is it at an 81? Uh, I think it's at 82 at the moment. At, at 82? I mean, I'm going to just double uh, yeah, check I'm that. Now. No, it went back down to 81. Yeah, so it's uh, 81, and um, the some of the talking points against the game, because yeah, that's, that's pretty much what it is, because like, uh, even though 81 is considered like a B, um, the online discourse will have you believing it's like a, a, a 60 or something like that. Just, uh, But the discourse um, is more so people are disappointed in the runtime it being short even though we known for a while it was going to be a shorter game and the first game was fairly short um people are mad that it has puzzles and people are mad that uh the combat isn't as what's the word um to me the combat's fine but the combat is it's a comment the runtime the puzzles um um that that's pretty much what uh their uh their points are there's a lot of people online talking hella crap there's a lot of engagement farming on twitter um and it's the a lot of i hate the negativity on like gaming and the thing is i think i just come to the uh realization that gaming gaming journalists media uh gamers they don't know how to convey anything other than negative thoughts. This is all they know how to do because we did nobody talks, uh, nobody produces a bunch of positive content about games they like. You got people who are talking about this game, people haven't even picked up a controller yet. You got like Peter Ovo, butt face, uh, you got Rad Dra- uh, Red Dragon, you got um, even Tim Dog. You got all these people who have not even downloaded the game yet, but they got so much content. <clears throat> hours of tweets and just discourse of this game drawing these comp- uh, opinions and I'm like I I can't stand uh, someone who doesn't play fucking games and someone who hasn't played a particular game trying to convince me a game is not good 
like in the reviews the way i hate the review system because even when people give their like reviews it's like the focus on whatever they think is bad about it it's like if the game is not a nine the game is bad it's like it's either nine or nothing and i that's why i hate the landscape of gaming so um i played it obviously addicts played it we both put out reviews uh, this we're gonna give our thoughts on it um personally my thought right now in this early part of the year is personally my game of the year um i say that because i had come i'm hellblade is a it's a it's a to me it's a new genre of a game and i feel like whatever how i look at it is whatever they were they were aiming to do i feel like they did it and they did a hell of a job if they wanted to create a story driven cinematic gaming experience they nailed it i feel like they nailed what they wanted to do in their type of game when you play hellblade one and you play hellblade two to me hellblade two is a uh, much better version of the first game with a better story with a better graphics with better emphasis on combat and uh world building and character building um I just think it's overall a better game in a way that they executed the game. I just don't see other games doing. These guys took a chance. They took a, a, a risk with their game. They stuck to their guns, and I felt like they delivered one hell of a blow. And gamers are dumb. They're stupid. They don't really don't know what they want. Um, so people are viewing some of the I, – I, I can't I can't say these reviews or uh, some of the thoughts on these games are valid because – Every game, by these standards that we're setting for video games, every game has to be the same. They all have to be carbon copies of whatever we think the best game is. A fucking, every game got to be like a Baldur's Gate. Every game got to be a fucking Last of Us. Or every game has to be a uh, Elden Ring if it falls into remotely one of those genres. And, it, and I don't think it's fair. A game like Hellblade 2 should be able to exist in this current form. I don't I didn't think the game have any had any real flaws. Um sure could they have added a little bit more types of puzzles? Um could it have had more action? I just feel like and I'm me personally I think you know me. I tell you there's some games I could play hours and hours, but I'm not a thing a, a person that says every game needs to be 18 to 20 fucking hours. Every game shouldn't be 40 hours. Every game shouldn't be 60 hours. The more because the thing is, life is too short, and um, I don't want games, I don't want video games feeling like a second job. Hellblade to me, in the time they given you, I feel like it delivered within that time frame. So, what if some people said they beat it in five hours? I think my first playthrough was like closer to like the nine hours or whatever. Um, I feel like that was time well spent and they, I feel like they got the most out of the time. Some games are overstated. You're welcome. Some games are too damn long and they get boring. I wasn't bored with Hellblade. There, the cutscenes weren't too long. The puzzles weren't too uh, frequent. And I feel like there was more action this time around. And the story was just good enough and engaging that I turned around. As soon as I wrote the credits on the first one, I immediately started the new game with the narration mode, which added another emphasis on the game. Shouts out to them. Nine and a half out of ten for me. It's my game of the year. I'm not saying I'm not saying this at the end of the end of the year. Will it remain my game of the year? I don't know. But just looking at what's on the horizon, uh, Assassin's Creed, that's probably gonna be a decent game. Um, I still got high hopes for Avowed and Indiana Jones, but I don't know of any other mega hit outside of the Elden Ring um coming out. Call of Duty's I uh, mean is, is, is gonna be a big seller, but that's not gonna be a, a game of the year. Um Maybe like I don't see I don't see it. I think this is the best game in my opinion to come out this year. Uh, it's the most unique, um, and it should stand on its own. But I I don't think uh, the gaming industry and the media and the, and the fanboys and fans alike are giving this game a fair share. Uh, Eighty one isn't a bad score, but me personally, I believe it should have been higher because I felt for if you played Hellblade one. <laughs> It's better than Hellblade 1. If you liked Hellblade 1 for what it delivered, I don't see why you wouldn't like this game. So let me ask you this. Then. <clears throat> when you play a sequel to a game, do you expect it to evolve the formula at the very least? The formula? 
Yeah, I, I expect the formula uh, uh, to improve, but do do you feel like they did that? Yeah, in this guy, because I didn't like I didn't like Hellblade one. That, that, I get there's there's nothing but screenshots of me uh, commenting on what I didn't like about Hellblade one. But yet when I say I like Hellblade two, people want to show me screenshots of Hellblade one. Yes, I didn't like Hellblade one. I like Hellblade two because it did things that I felt better than Hellblade one. Their action. Uh, the combat sequences, my biggest complaint was the combat sequences and they feel in chor choreographed and they were too far in between. This time it was reversed. The combat was more often, the enemies were more diverse. It, I, it was impactful combat, meaningful combat. The, the set pieces around the combat was amazing and the puzzles were too far in between, but that was a good thing because I didn't want to do a bunch of puzzles in this game. And they, to me, there wasn't a lot of puzzles. So I feel like they improved on whatever they're trying to deliver. And, and it took me a while, because remember, before Hellblade 2 came out, before we knew more about it, I was like, okay, I hope it's now, instead of it being like a walking sim, I hope it's just an action game, right? They just turn it into an action game. And I feel like if they would have done that, it would have been it would have been like a, a 70s or a 60s. And I'm happy that they doubled down on their formula or whatever they're trying to do because I feel like I I now see the game for uh, what it is in a package. I was like, okay, you know what? This is actually kind of dope. This is this is really dope. I'll play the game. I like I said, I'm gonna I'm gonna beat the game again, and I'm gonna turn around and buy the game on on Steam. But yeah, I do think it improved on the first game um, how, on its formula. You, in some cases, I feel like it. You know, it got the. The game got worse like in terms of like combat like they took out certain mechanics that was in the original game when you did combat and like to me that should never be like something that we thrive for like we should always at least want you know the experience we played before within reason as long as it's not like horrible or anything like that um but i i, I do feel like there are obviously there's people on the internet that are just being ridiculous mm -hmm. and it didn't matter what xbox did with this game they weren't going to be happy uh, but I do feel like there's a lot of people that are, that that have genuine, you know, issues with the game. Um, I do feel like the story, to me, I enjoyed the story from the first one more, uh, because the story to this one was kind of good, like all over the place. You know, it, 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 they told it okay, like, but <clears throat> to me, it's like spoiler alert. Like, it's just about like hunting down things. You know what I'm saying? Like, and, and I felt like. The first one had more meaning because it was about, you know, her, her lover. It was about her, her ex and, you know, he, he's passed away and she, she feels a way about it and she's trying to revive him and she's not able to. And the game's about her accepting the fact that he's gone. Uh, I felt like this one was all over the place. Doesn't mean it's like a bad game, but I did feel like in terms of story, it was all over the place. My thing is, is that see me personally, I, I I didn't like the first. I understood the story, but I wasn't in love with it because the thing is, I didn't like one. I don't like feeling alone. The game made you feel alone. It was just you and your voices, and short of love story, you're a Nordic warrior, and you're you're trying to get closure from uh you know the loss of uh a loved one, right? I wish, wish he was carrying his head or something like that. Yeah. This entire time. <laughs> like, I get it why people, it was, it was, it was unique, was different. There was nothing like it. But my thing is, where would you go? What, what kind of, where would you go if to, to, on a follow up game? Like, it's still alone, <laughs> still trying to revive I, her boyfriend. So they did go the way that they should have went in terms of, you know, where they were. Uh, she was trying to find the people that were ultimately responsible for her boyfriend dying in the original yeah, one. Her boyfriend name's Dylan, uh, right? Yeah. yeah, Dylan dying. But mm -hmm. I don't think they went far enough with it. Like, I would have liked where, you know, you caught up to it and it was like, a, there was more to the story than that. Like, I felt like, for the most part, you, you, knew, you knew just as much at the beginning of that game than you knew at the end of that game. There was not really much evolving situation. It really kind of felt like you was on a side quest to a side quest to a side quest, and you might have accomplished your goal in the end, but it didn't really it didn't it didn't solve anything. It was the exact same situation. You know what I'm saying? Like maybe 
a better scenario would have been okay, these slavers are the one that did it, and you find out why they did it. Uh, and then they're like, but a god was was influencing them because they already brought giants in it. So clearly that's not too much of a stretch to bring more of, you know, Norse mythology into the thing. Cause to me, if you're going to dig into the bag and bring giants in it, you might as well dig into the bag and use it for reasons that you could use it for. And, and I felt like they could have easily have gotten a better story than they did. doesn't mean the story was bad. Mm-hmm. It's just, I wasn't really gravitated towards really any of the characters. Uh, by the time I cared about anything, the game was over. Uh, you know, I personally felt like they should have done better in terms of <clears throat> her voices. I think, um, I can't remember what they're called. The Fury. Uh, or the Furies. They should have done better with them. Because like, to me, maybe, maybe I'm out of pocket for this, but I personally felt like the Furies was in my head, not hers. Like she never really acknowledged them. You know, for the most part, it you it was just something you had to hear. I, I never felt like at any time in the in the point when she's on her rampage or they're like communicating back and forth in your ear that she acknowledged them or even exi- like act like they existed. Do you get what I'm saying? Um, I get you, but then I, I also disagree because there was um there were parts of the uh, game where like you know they're telling her not to do it and they they were they were more so reacting. To her uh, decisions, but she'll answer some in moments. And the thing is, the reason why it was more impactful in the first game because she was alone. There was no other well, see, being. Here's here's my thing. All right, they did do that, but what's the point of bringing in characters when they're not going to follow the same rules that she does? The whole point of this game, and correct me if I'm wrong, is her admitting, like her. What's what I'm looking for? Her living with the fact that she has mental issues. Would you not agree? Yeah, but th- I mean, they, I don't think they a- a- acknowledge mental issues. It was looked at as like a special. But that's ability my point. That that then. was the whole sell of this game. Is Setsuna is a person that is a strong individual person that is going through mental issues, and she and she, and her her struggles are worse because of her mental issues. And I felt like. What they were working with, they didn't really do. Like, I was talking about, like, okay, maybe imagine there's a conversation that she's having and the voices get so loud where she starts talking back to them. And then, like, the other individual characters around you sees her talking to herself. It puts more of a cadence on the actual story in in general. It's like, okay. I I feel like that happened, though. Towards I didn't feel like it happened at all. Like, when what's name realized that, with her well being some call it a gift or what what she's able to do um I, f- I forget his name um oh my god i goodness. just personally to me i feel like there should have been more of an internal battle and people say well the first game was about her conquering her inner demons her mm-hmm. conquering the theories but that's not how mental illness is like you, you, you can acknowledge they're there, but it's not like it's gonna stop the symptoms from happening. Do you get what I'm saying? Like most people have to be medicated and stuff like this, and in the world where they live in, I think it's unrealistic for her to go from the struggle she went in the first one to almost no struggle at all. Does that make sense? I felt like it was there. <laughs> I don't feel like it was I, I there. I feel like man. It was the only thing- one time that she talked to the the Furies herself. You want me to give you a chap? She she's a, she acknowledges them throughout the game. But she never talks to them. She but the, never exact like there, there was one time the she only con- person that the only person that she does interact with from the Furies is her dad's Fury. Like she'll say stuff like uh, when when he makes a comment, she will sometimes comment on what he's saying because he's a, an antagonist. But, see, I wanted more like <clears throat> the Golem, you know, Golem from Lord of the Rings. Yeah. How maybe not necessarily as bad as him. But I wanted like certain decisions that she's making where it's like good, the good uh, Fury versus the bad Fury, and she's arguing with them. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Um, I don't know. I mean, I think, um, again, I wasn't too in love with the first game. Um, and, 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 and I think maybe it all comes down to uh, preference and, and, and palette, gaming palette. 
that like I I tend to deviate and like more games that I guess people just don't like. I mean, like the art of gaming is just so like polarizing. I enjoy like I enjoyed Hellblade too. Uh, I didn't. I liked Hellblade when it just wasn't my favorite. I didn't understand what the big deal was. This game, comes- I can understand what the big deal would be, but pl- I don't think people are seeing what the big deal was. I feel like they did a bunch of shit in this game that just was flat out dope, and, and that didn't. There was like moments in this game that just doesn't exist in the first game, and it's not getting its credit because well, of some. Let, let, let's break that down. What are some of the moments? Out of the set pieces, the set okay, pieces. There was there was. I feel like there, there was. was a, go ahead. There wasn't really set pieces in the first one. I'll give you that. Uh, the set pieces and and Hellblade are, are very stellar, and I, I especially like uh, Chapter Four set piece. Mm-hmm. Really good set piece. Uh, but when you're an immersion game solely, and you're not really captivating on anything else, not combat. Uh, they do captivate on sound, but like I said, in my personal opinion. Uh, the biggest sound portion of the game is the Furies, and I feel like they kind of dropped the ball on that one to a degree. I do feel like they they were missing something here because the story didn't really captivate me a whole lot. The combat was good to a degree because of the immersion of how highly detailed the game was, but I think we can both agree that the combat was ex- extremely simplistic. Yes, simplicity because one, they want the game to be approachable. I don't mind the simplicity of the combat if the game looks and feels good. Um, the the game added its own level of difficulty because they don't teach you how to play. The, the there's no button inputs. There's no the you there's no UI. There's it's just it's, it's pick up and play. So it's this level of um, a trial and error in the game. Uh, the thing about the combat that I like, I felt like every combat sequence that I was in, they set like a stage and not like where every combat sequence in Hellblade 1 was completely predictable. These weren't. And you felt like you were in a, a, a moment and they lasted for a decent amount of time when you were in these uh, sequences. It's like uh, the obviously the first fight uh, w- when you meet the old boy, um, the slaver. Um, and then the obviously the. I think the final fight, to me, I had me impressed. And then those major sequences in between those, you know, the the giant sequences and and getting through those missions, I just felt like there was they did nothing close to this in the first game. And I don't think many games do anything to put that level of focus. And so when you consider the package of what type of game it is, and if people look at it, it's not fucking God of War. It's not like whatever they want it to be. If they look at it in its own package, this is an incredible game. It's, it's, in, it's incredible. It, it, I don't, <laughs> I, I will. The one thing I won't disagree with you on is I do feel like some of the industry, uh, these, uh, media people, I do feel like they're reviewing Hellblade more on where Xbox is and not necessarily yeah. on Hellblade itself. Yeah. We won't disagree on that. Cause I do feel like this game is not an 81 to me. It's like an 84, 85, maybe 86. And that's that's the very max, because the thing is, is I feel like a lot of games mm-hmm. c- uh, that would have approached something like this, maybe if it was a, a a different studio, it wouldn't get this kind of, uh, you know, not necessarily attacking, but I feel like people are so concerned on what Xbox is doing, they're not really being fair to Hellblade. Now that doesn't mean it's gonna it would have reviewed better. It's just I do feel like some people are being a little bit unrealistic on whether or not hellblade is what it should be now you can make the argument on should it make i do think it it shouldn't be held on what xbox is or isn't Mm -hmm. but it definitely should be held on the prequel and the the prequel got about the same score and when you don't really improve on anything but the graphics which let's be real here smooth in seven years would you expect the graphics to be better regardless yeah but this so is one of the best like, looking can, games in, in 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 at all of all times so far. But at the end of the day, let, let's let's go back and let's look at games that kind of went the same way. We got Order eighteen eighty six, amazing looking game, simplistic combat. What did it score? It was uh, sixty something. Okay, then we got Rise of Rome, amazing looking mm-hmm. game, simplistic combat. What did it score? Uh, sixty something. Hellblade is not a sixty something, but I don't think any of those games are actually sixty somethings. These these yeah, games but, were but see, harshly that, reviewed. 
we're not we're not talking about what me and you feel Hellblade mm-hmm. is. Like I told you, I think Hellblade's like an 84, 85, maybe an 86. Uh, and they're probably mm-hmm. mainly aiming towards like an 84. But the industry likes more combat than anything, and that's where I'm going to push back a little bit on like the Xbox hack for this particular situation because we have Order 1886 on PlayStation last gen, and in a lot of ways it did stuff better than Hellblade did because of like the unique universe it was in vampire uh, not vampires werewolves and it still got review bombed to 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 uh, to the abyss and back it's just i think we have to uh, uh accept the fact that there are a lot of people in the industry that you know graphics are important but they like substance with the graphics and i'm kind of this game has a whole people, lot man. of substance though that's why it i didn't like really, i didn't though. like it that doesn't. whole oh, so graphics over something like did you did you, what are we not playing the same game like I don't. So, the substance. But here's it's sub, what is substance? What because that means you got their, their value. You guys are valuing only one thing is considered substance. What do you guys consider substance? I feel like the combat is, you know, what took a took a side cart in this game. I think it was mainly focusing on the graphics, which is okay. But at no, the same time, it wasn't mainly no. focused on the graphics. The graphics is the graphics b- the sound. most noticeable thing because the first thing you see. But I feel like the game had a heavy focus on presentation and a heavy focus That's on graphics, story. Though. No, no, no. Presentation the way isn't a game graphics. Is presented is definitely graphics. No, it's not. There, there's there's a lot of things that goes into presentation. I've seen two D games thing, what, that have good presentation. When you put when you and I think would you not agree that when you put gameplay to the side over anything you better come to that you better come to that like really going like no you better because know what the hell the, you but that, that's the problem that the thing is because everybody wants these games to be carbon copies of other games i don't think they put game i mean to not the necessarily side. i this just is, think people wanted they wanted an evolution when it comes to the gameplay hellblade like they want hellblade but, here's go ahead my bad we're, we're talking about whether or not and that's why I said we can have the debate on whether or not you should expect uh, a game like Hellblade to improve the graphics. And I do. I think if you how did the combat for Hellblade get worse with the sequel? Not better. It didn't now, get worse. Say, I don't think it got worse. Well, I, I think I, people, I, I think those people got worse. I don't I think. It, there's it, a no. diff- I think there's a difference between looking at something like the combat and say, yo, it, it feels so immersive because the game looks so good. That doesn't necessarily mean the combat got better. It just means the overall feel of the game got better because of the way it looks. How did it get worse? <clears throat> I, I, like I told you, they they took a, they first off, there's one on one combat, which isn't a big deal, but that that is worse. Would you not agree? One on one combat, the first type of combat is is. The definition of being worse. No, it took away. It took away multiple features from the original one. What, what right? was that? What's it, those it, features? It took away. It took away the 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 B button where you where you hit them with your elbow. It took away the sidestepping uh, attacks. It, no, I mean, you just ro- the side. So the side. No, you can no, sidestep you can, in this game. Yes, that's what I, I would. I consider step an attack, uh, evade and hit. Okay, keep in mind, when's, when did you play Hellblade? I played the Hellblade uh, in 20... When did it... I think I did 2018, and then I did it again when it got um, the ray tracing and, and FPS boost. I just played Hellblade last week. Okay, I, I mean, it, the game it wasn't that crazy. It, I don't think it... My thing is, I've noticed... Multiple things in Hellblade 2 that wasn't apparent in Hellblade 1. If if you want to say they regressed somewhere, they regressed, and yeah, there weren't a whole lot of puzzles, which I didn't want a whole lot of puzzles. There was enough. I actually feel like the puzzles got worse in this game. I didn't like the puzzles at all in Hellblade. But but my point is, is in Chapter 4 of Hellblade 2, it felt like the entire game at that point was puzzles. Now, that was just that chapter because you was in an area where it made sense where there would be puzzles. But when you have the puzzles going up to the cave and then you have the cave puzzles, I felt like every time I solved a puzzle, there was another puzzle right afterwards. Yeah, because that that was like a trial. You know how in the first game there was like... And that's fine, but... Once again, it doesn't take away from the fact that how many puzzles was there. Now, with the puzzle with the torch giving, you know what I'm talking about? Yeah, yeah. That was an okay puzzle, and I enjoyed that. But when I go through, like, four different rooms where I have to, uh, you know, uniquely put torches here, uniquely uh, put uh, fire here, like, that, I understand that that 
is a trial, but you didn't have to make it that much. Because I personally do believe that the to- uh, that the the puzzles in this game do. Do you felt like they were enjoyable? Yeah. <laughs> The it only got, puzzle that I felt I like it was, a, I felt like it was a was necessary the- uh, <laughs> addition. To, it was a necessary part of the game. And, and here's the thing: uh, reason why I disagree with a lot of the reviewers and all this stuff because I feel like it, it, when people keep saying that they put gameplay to the side, this I, I feel like this game is an experience. I feel like both Hellblades are experience and an experience and their experience game. Uh, the gameplay I, it depends because what you guys want their gameplay to be. That's their gameplay for this game. Okay. That's just that's it, just what it, it is. That's they fine. did it and that's for two fine. games in they a row. Cho- they chose to keep it safe more towards the original Hellblade experience, and that's fine. But it doesn't it doesn't make it to where we can't criticize their decision. They could have done a variety of things that made the 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 gameplay a lot more. If you wanted to make it gory, if you wanted to keep the immersion section. Why didn't they put more set pieces in the game? Why didn't they put more of the things that was in like God of War where the original God of War where it's like really gory and you rip stuff off? They could have did stuff like that as well. Because she's a girl. She's a fragile girl. She ain't no freaking, she's not a god. She's not a monster. She ain't all that strong. Remember, you realize how she got, how, how did she get that sword? She, she, she got a random, she took advantage of her opportunity, um, and took the, the sword from like one of the first, uh, Per people you come across there wasn't like no special sword no master sword it was a random sword so then explain okay okay I, I i will concede to that to a degree i do feel like uh you know that this this chick is a very vet fighter so i, I don't really understand that but if you look at it from set pieces like that was like chapter four chapter five they could have done that a lot more in the game I be a like very immersive like the chapter four set piece at the end was amazing the fire thing that you did yeah great set piece one of I the feel highlights like they put a, i feel like they put like or they tried to execute a major set piece in each chapter and i feel like they i would they have preferred more that. set pieces and less puzzles okay because i do feel like it, it, it look and i'm not trying to say that the game was bad it was a good game i enjoyed it but i can understand the the issues people had with it like, look, look at it this smooth. I don't. People say you could beat this game in five hours. I don't don't believe that. Uh, I I played about six and a half hours, and I kind of b railed the whole experience. So I don't really know how people, unless you skip cutscenes, which maybe they did that. Continue. I have a phone call. Yep. Um. Yeah. The, I don't follow the whole five hour things. I'm pretty sure somebody can do the uh, five hours, but I feel like the. The cutscenes aren't long. I don't know if the cutscenes are skippable because I don't, I don't think I could skip a cutscene. But um, from what I've again, my first playthrough was about I I want to say it had to be about closer to eight hours. My um, oh, my dog's in here. Um, and I'm on my uh, second playthrough. That's probably gonna go by quicker since I know exactly what I'm doing. I I've, I've kind of almost mastered the combat. Um. But the five hours is just hyperbole. It's, it's just people trying to, and, to, to to crap on a game. So, And I do think that it's unfair for people to say that an 81 or 82, because it was an 82 later. It's, it's like I said, 83, 84, 85. That's where I would put it. Um, I don't think even an 81. 81 is not a bad game. It's a solid experience. The problem is, is Microsoft needs to be more consistent in its experiences because now every game that a Microsoft studio or Microsoft owned studio makes, there's these giant expectations on it. Oh, the entire Xbox brands on it. And I think we are, we are hearing that more and more. Like for instance, like people are saying, Oh, the, the, the leadership needs to be took out now. Now look, I'm not going to sit here and say Matt Booty has been the amazing, the most amazing leader of Xbox. There's been a lot of incidences where you could say that, you know, maybe someone else needs to come and take his place. But where is that energy going to the people that are in charge of deals at micro uh, at PlayStation because what was what was uh Stella Blades Metacritic? I think it was like an eighty two or eighty one. What was Rise and Ronin's review? Uh, credit? I think Rise of Ronin was uh was that was that a, in the sixties or the seventies? Seventies. It was the seventies. 70, yeah. What what was uh for Spokens? For Spoken, I think it was like a sixty nine or a seventy one. I think. Yeah. My point is, their Square Enix deals ain't really worked out well for them. Uh. For the most part, if it's not Final Fantasy, those games ain't reviewing amazing. Would you not agree? Yeah. 
Why uh, ain't people asking for his job? He's clearly not getting good enough timed exclusives. Did, you know what's it's crazy? Getting... You want to hear something crazy, though, right? Prior to Xbox, you know, improving, what was the, the, the common Xbox review score? 69. 69, right? Now they've been consistently delivering 80s, early 80s or mid 80s. That's that they've been mm -hmm. that they, they and, and, consistently and, actually, and now we're treating those 80s like the 60s. majority the majority of of Xbox's games for the past few years have been 80s and above. Almost every single one of them. Yeah. You get the occasional like Redfall. I mean let, let's let's go over. Uh go ahead and bring up your uh, Metacritic and we'll go over the games cuz yeah. th that's what I'm saying. It's like look that we're not going to argue that there is some issues at Xbox, but the problem is it's not games. It's games they want. It's games that the PlayStation community wants to play. Yeah. So, um, I, I mean, I forgot. I want to see if I can really go by the, as them as a publisher, right? Um, well, let's let's just pick out games that came out like right. last year and the all year right. before. So let's 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 go Xbox uh, Series uh, era uh, era game. So let's start okay, with let's go that twenty twenty. I think. 2021 do you want to count the okay continue so uh, that's grounded so look up grounded 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 is in the 83 okay um over an 80 uh look up redfall because we know that's not going to be an 80 but we do need to look it up to just uh to yeah. make sure the metacritic redfall is 56 okay look up uh starfield well, we know that Starfield's an 83. Look up uh, Forza Horizon 5, because I'm pretty sure that was on the Xbox series. Yeah, Forza Horizon. Uh, Forza Horizon 5 is a 92. Okay, look up Forza uh, Motorsport, because that, that's that was 84. definitely on the Xbox. Like, that's what I'm saying. Like, Look, we can sit here and we can debate. Uh, look up um, Halo Infinite. Was in eighty seven, eighty six, oh eighty seven. Yeah, um, Psychonauts, oh, uh, Empire Online, uh, 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 the Empire games, whatever they're called. Age of Empires. Those were Age uh, of Empires. So Psychonauts, are... Psychonauts two was in eighty seven. Age of Empires uh, four was in eighty three. Age What's of Empires Wasteland three. Oh, Wasteland three was I think at eighty. Wasteland three is at eighty five. That that's my point. It's like, look, we can debate on they need more. Over the shoulder action adventure game, something like Hellblade, but more fruit. Something that's a little bit more, you know, combat oriented than Hellblade. Doesn't mean Hellblade doesn't have a place in 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 Xbox's arsenal. It just means they need more stuff that appeals to a PlayStation audience because that's that's what a lot of the industry likes. Yeah. Because like you just renamed me. All these 80 plus games and Everyone in this comment section gonna tell me none of them count. Now let's 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 go look up. Uh, what was that? Um, what was that game? There was a PlayStation exclusive that bombed. It was in the fifties. Babylon. It, it was. I think it. No, it was. Um. I think it was a Square Enix game. Babylon's Fall it, or Babylon's Foam Fall. Stars. Yeah, Bo Babylon's Fall is like a sixty-one. Foam Star. Which Foam Star is a fifty-seven. If that, I mean, you don't even need to look more to that. For Spoken, what's For Spoken? For Spoken, which I'm looking forward to that game when it comes to Xbox, but uh, um, For Spoken is 64. Okay, now let's look at um, what did Ry uh, Ronan get? What did Ronan actually get? Because I think we, we just theorized what it got. Rise of Ronan got a 76. Once again, you know, I get it. The reason PlayStation gets away with delivering those type of titles is because they deliver some of the best titles that come out every generation. But at the same time, we cannot sit here and say an 81 is bad, but we're saying all these games are good. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Um, like uh, everybody's uh, favorite game uh, there, uh, some people's game of the year, Stellar Blade is currently sitting at an 81. Same exact score. Same exact score. Hellblade. Yeah, and 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 I, you never talk to me talking smack about help, uh about Stella Play, because I understand that that's a good score. Now, I think we've gotten to the point, and me and you, we engage in it too. You know, we, uh, I think the console war has hijacked the, uh, 
the reviews for a while we're yeah. just seeing the outcome it's getting worse yeah, you know absolutely. we we shouldn't be looking at something like an 81 and automatically go into clown mode on twitter now you can be disappointed because you expect a different experience like i am when it comes to hellblade but we can't sit here and act like hellblade's a bad game yeah yeah i don't feel like that that's it's, not being genuine yeah hellblade is it I, I i enjoyed hellblade i think you know everyone should give it a try it's it, here's a couple things about hellblade i don't like and i'm sick and tired of not, not about hellblade but the whole thing about hellblade right Hellblade is forty nine ninety nine digital only title, right? People are talking about it as if this, if it's the seventy dollar, oh, like we're being ripped off, and it's on Game Pass. People last week we were uh, complaining that Microsoft wasn't marketing, right? It, right, and then I saw a tweet from somebody saying. All this marketing for a five-hour game was like marketing. Oh, they marketed for ten years. They, they didn't market this game for ten years. Yeah, sure. We they they showed it at the game awards. We got a few marketing beats uh, here and there for it. Um, but overall, we thought the game could use more marketing. But I will say this about Hubblade: I'm actually happy we didn't see more of it because I feel like I was I was pleasantly surprised. At a lot of moments in that game that did not show up at like an E3 yeah, or at a Game definitely. Awards and whatnot, um, that I was I was like, okay, you know what, I can I can respect this. I'm happy I didn't see the entirety of the thing because there was moments that they could have picked. Remember, like the the biggest thing that they really shown was the the, the giant in the cave, right? The water giant. Um, mm-hmm. That was the the biggest like part. But I was like, they had a better sequence than that that they could have shown that probably would have. Ruined it. Had we seen that version, um, I actually don't. Oh, you talk about what happens after that? No, before like, that, because remember, though, oh, I felt like the the first encounter giant and you can't encounter it was better than the cave it, one. I think both of them were amazing. That's yeah. the issue that we're having is just people. I personally believe expected more than they got from Hellblade. I'm one of them, but just because you expected more does not mean that the game's bad. It just yeah. you wanted more substance to the gameplay. You wanted more substance to the uh, to the story because I did. I felt like the story was very underwhelming. It wasn't bad. It's just with a situation like she's in, I thought mm-hmm. they could have done so much better. I, I I can't say, but then again, me I'm coming from. I feel like again I'm. I, I I'm coming to an understanding like I have a uh and I, I'm not saying this about like Hellblade but I'm just saying I feel like I have a a better appreciation of what they call mediocre games right like I find good in games that people don't like for example one of my favorite games uh last year well I, well I thoroughly I played it this year was RoboCop I feel like it's one of the best games made in the, in the last couple of years my favorite game last year outside of Starfield because I think Starfield was my game of the year last year. But other than Starfield was Dead Island 2. Even like in and that regressed. If you consider Dead Island 2 regressed from Dead Island 1 in terms of what scope and what you can do. Because in Dead Island 1, you could drive, it was completely open world. Dead Island 2 was scaled back. However, it was a much funner game, in my opinion. Yeah, I actually uh, really enjoyed Dead Island. Um and like I, I enjoy Banishers. I think Banishers, are freaking uh, surprisingly, I think it's that Banishers. Where what's where that score? Banishers is at seventy eight. Banishers I to me the, is like a, a like a, a high eighties game in my opinion. To um, me, I think the biggest issue we're having is Microsoft is still only delivering good games. Mm-hmm. Uh, they need that. It's undeniable this is the game of the year t- contender. Like, there's no denying. You know, here's the thing I, I, I have. Like, Starfield was a good direction mm-hmm. towards that, but they missed a lot of the points that I particularly would have liked for Starfield. I think if they start hitting more games completely out of the park and mm-hmm. not just doing okay, and they don't have to do it all the time. But the problem is, when's the last time an Xbox game was put in game of the year contender? Uh, Xbox, I don't. I, this it is what matters, I'm gonna, man. It matters, but I don't think Xbox will because the thing is the industry won't let them. The industry, the media, the fans, it, they will not because this is this is, in my opinion, I think beauty is in the eye of the beholder, right? I believe that a lot of these games that get all these crazy ass things is because this is a, co- a collective that says, hey, this is great. And I feel like when it comes to Xbox, the collective, any there's plenty of games that Xbox released that could have 
pretty much could have been that if the collective gave those games a chance. Starfield so, should have been I, one I of do those. Agree. I do believe I do Hellblade think, is one of them. But I do think that there are it's like I said, I don't think there's an Xbox tax. I think there's people in the industry that are in positions of power that have a lot of influence that just fucking hates Xbox. And they have a lot of influence to actually really influence certain things. Now, I don't know when it comes to the video game awards. I do mm -hmm. think that it is weird how certain things are handled there. Mm -hmm. Like, for instance, when it comes to PlayStation, I've seen them move like the uh, the date. But it doesn't feel like other people get that option. Uh, yeah, that's yeah, they not moved the date for one game. They, they moved the date for uh, freaking. Wasn't it Spider Man? Um, no, Spider Spider Man came out in October. It was the it was another game. I think it was. Uh, oh my goodness! Uh, keep going. I have a phone call. There's another game. What game came out? No, they moved it for God of War and Ragnarok. They moved it for Ragnarok. That's what... And, you know, obviously, you know, you can make the, the argument that that's one of those those situations that maybe uh, that was just better for their overall uh, brand yeah. because it was such a big game. Mm -hmm. But it, it shouldn't have happened. It should have been moved to this year, just like Jedi Survivor got hit. Yeah, yeah, because it also, yeah, because Forza Horizon, what they said, Forza Horizon 5 released though, technically a week before Ragnarok. No, and Horizon qualified because it was dominated for other stuff, just not game of the year. Yeah. Even though Horizon was the, the highest, the highest rated, rated game, game that, year. that year, highest rated game that year. Um, you know, the thing is, is that I, I, I can't rely on gaming journalists or journalists in general to, uh, to acknowledge a good game. They will continue to pick your usual suspects, um, and. I think Xbox, I don't know, because I know for the rest of the year, Xbox is not going to deliver a, a, a 90 mega hit must have um, because we look at the rest of it because Hellblade technically could have been the closest thing to it. And I'm not saying this because I think Avowed is bad or anything or, or Indiana Jones. I think those the, the other two games, I, I feel like Xbox have the best year this year. Um, Hellblade, they kicked it off right with that. By far the best year. And you know what's funny? Uh, that's not to mention the Gears collection that uh, that's been rumored heavily that looks like it might be coming out this year. That's not to mention the uh, the prequel to uh, Doom mm -hmm. that looks like it's coming out this year. Uh, you got Indiana Jones still. You yep. got Contraband that might come out this year. This is Xbox. Xbox is having such a better year than than its competition. It's not even fair at this point. Yeah. But at the end of the day, we both both know. All that doesn't matter if you have bad messaging and you're not necessarily look 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 what we've seen here in the pra in, in the practices and the way that the perception is online. Do you honestly think if the perception for Xbox was better, Hellblade would have been re uh, would have been received better? Yeah, yeah, like people like and, and that that's why I always tell you know these companies they want to sit there and they want to say this and they want to say that. Oh, you know, shut up. Because you're just you're hurting your your whole perspective worse and worse. Yeah, like you know we we've, we've seen things like this happen. If I remember, somebody literally gave High Five Rush like a certain score because Xbox didn't have any games in 2022. That that was that was a part of their re review beat. Uh, so they they docked High Five Rush some points and and then help. And what happened this year? Xbox with the uh, multiply thing. Xbox shutting down Tangle. Xbox this like the, the podcasts about pretty much Hellblade is literally talking about Xbox in their business decisions. And that is clearly factoring people's reviews on their games. For If if Hellblade was a regular fucking game that wasn't, you know, married to, to like Xbox, let's say if it was like Liza P, it wasn't married to Xbox, but it was just coming to Game Pass. These discussions wouldn't exist. It would score higher. It wouldn't be, uh, there would be nothing on Twitter. It would just be another freaking game. I, I hate this about uh I really this is the one thing about uh exclusives or um the the Xbox that I hate is that like their games can't just live on their own merit. They have to be tied down with this premeditated hate um and um malice that surrounds it. You there still? I think you're yeah, muted. Yeah, keep going. I'm almost done. Oh, okay, cool, okay. Um, but a lot of a lot of the discussion and discourse around, you know, Xbox games, it's like honestly, it, a lot of it is not even on the game, and their their games aren't appreciated 
in the manner that they should be or or in a manner that other games are appreciated um and is and is unfair cuz uh, again I don't think Hellblade 2 uh, is being reviewed as a under the impression like hey this is the game we got Lo, what for the for what they tried to deliver did they deliver it's not being reviewed that way the same thing with Starfield I don't think Starfield was reviewed in a way it it it, it should have um and that's why like I said, a lot of games get uh, get praised, or their every game I feel like is being needs to be the next, the next Cyberpunk, the next The Witcher, the next Uncharted, the next Last of Us, the next um, uh, the next Elden Ring, the the next uh, uh, whatever uh, a big game that they wanted to be. Um, and the and games will no longer are no longer being comp, uh, being reviewed based on what they are. You know what I mean? Is Hellblade a bad version of Hellblade, or is it a no. better version of Hellblade? It, it's it's a better version than Hellblade, but it, it there were certain sections of the game that I have to say once again that that was worse than the original game. Mm-hmm. You know, it, when it comes to the combat and how simplistic it was in the original one. I don't see a an argument to justify taking away abilities from the first one. I mean, how important was these abilities though? They were pretty important, man. Really? Because I yeah, it gave it more diverse reckon... in combat. Okay, but here's the thing: you played it in in 2020, and I played this one uh, ready twice back to back, and I had I, I had my combat sequences have all took place differently of how I played them, and, and, and no one no one's saying that you know. You didn't play this game twice. I'm saying I literally just played Hellblade 1 to tell you that those abilities was very useful and it gave a lot of dynamic gameplay when it comes to the what combat. Would you, what was your internal score for Hellblade 1? I, know, I don't know if you did a video on it, but I know you streamed it. Uh, I would give them both about a about a 7, 8 out of 10. The same score? Yeah, I would say they're, they're about the same. Because what, what Hellblade 1 did better to me, Hellblade 2 did better in a lot of ways like the graphics in hellblade 2 and the way that they did mocap and stuff is just it's just on another level like completely on another level and i think that definitely deserves a lot of props but it's like i said i did not like the story like it was okay but i i didn't find myself interested really at all okay fair enough fair enough um I'm not mad at it, but I, I will say this uh, to everybody online, to the Peter Ovos, to the Red Dragons, to the uh, the far, uh, the bot farming simulator uh, Dreamcast guy. Um, you guys really need to do yourself. You guys are doing yourself a disservice um, with their the, the narrative. Um, not even just about Hellblade, but anything that has anything to do with Xbox. It's I don't understand how one can operate out of just sheer hate, neg- negativity, and like it, just engagement farming. Like this is like dudes. It's like they're oh, running so- a business on like pretty much Xbox and how can it be spun negatively? I don't understand I, it. I agree. There's a lot of people doing that, but I would also say there's people the the toxic positivity ain't been any ain't been stronger ever, man. Like I can't say stuff about hellblade without someone literally commented on my video about hellblade and said i had to turn it off because i'm just tired of the doom and gloom just giving credit and i said if you enjoyed hellblade one this is the game for you but because of these people that go around (laughs) practicing toxic positivity i can't say that because their audience is theirs and my audience is theirs in a lot of ways and they are used to xbox does no wrong and I literally can't say anything negative about Xbox at all yeah. without, be deemed uh, uh, neg- uh, be, uh, without being deemed uh, toxic positivity. I mean, uh, doom and gloom. People are using doom and gloom way too much. I mean, okay. I'm not going to say – I get it, like, because I talk a, 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 a whole heap of crap about Xbox and their decisions, and sometimes I feel like doom and gloom. I just feel like, you know, I don't – trust you know microsoft and xbox i don't i just feel like yo they're gonna find a way to like destroy my fandom which i feel like they consist consistently have done is destroy fandom 
Uh, so sometimes I wake up on the wrong side of the bed and I, and I tweet things like, you know, Xbox sucks because they're going to do this. You know, when I heard about Gears of War potentially going to PlayStation, I'm like, stupid. This is the worst thing you can do. Um, they don't have to give Doom on, put Doom on PlayStation, but they will because they're dumb. Like stuff like that. See, um, and what's funny is like when we bring stuff like that up and we're just concerned for the Xbox platform as a whole, the Xbox hardcore audience call us, oh, we're doom and gloom. Oh, it's negative Nancy. It's like, but when I talk about Score Enix missing quotes, they're all for that. Where's the negative Nancy with that? They're all both negative news, but they only care about one and necessarily not the other. Yeah. Um, when it's, 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 it's the fan base, though. The thing is, is that there's a lot of people on the internet um, that want gaming is just a huge like in crowd thing. It's like high school all over again, right? It's like you know they want to be down with the like the cool kids, and right now the cool kids are always PlayStation or the cool kids are people that are anti Xbox. But the thing is, the the one thing that you can hold to there is always good to be a uh, part of a a a, a crew or. Uh, a, a part of a support team um and for xbox on the xbox side it feels like the fandom is losing that people are just straight going like trading in uh, their you know xbox fandom for playstation fandom and people get sick and tired of like seeing oh here's another one here's another one here's another one she got the hello pony behind you yeah <laughs> she's a and, and, and here and and here's another one so i can understand like people like obviously after tim dog uh, you see, when M MBG was an Xbox guy, uh, Tim Dog was an Xbox guy. Uh, all these people were Xbox guys, and they're all like cutting over it, and they're becoming what Red Dragons is. It's like it's one thing is like, all right, you, you're not happy with Xbox, but you become like a a, a, a pro Xbox account to a anti Xbox account, and it gets an, it's annoying. There's no escaping. So. I know it sounds like kind of crazy and mental for me to discover it this way. It's just that that want to be in and the want to support. So people, what happens is people start to abandon. If you if you if you're if you're no longer a, a place they can go for refuge or a place they can go for like to get out of that constant attacking of Xbox. Just like hey, I just want to know what's going on uh, with with Xbox. People is trying to run away from it and. So you get the comments like you, you get because people are sick of it. That's why Maddie's going through what well, he's going through. People are sick of it. Uh, like Maddie and I like, agree. Like, like, there's a like lot five of... or six consecutive, you know, videos. It's like, oh, my God, here we go again. You know, and, and I get that. But there are people that are doing it on purpose and there's no denying that. Would you consider me specifically talking shit about Xbox just for engagement? Would you consider me an engagement? person no because what i do feel you like think it, <laughs> do you think it's it's hard to believe that someone looks at my content and thinks i'm doing it i, I don't know because I don't, people don't know you as long as i do but i feel like you've always been like this oh, i've always been like, like no, no like a, a, a glass half empty type of like guy in terms of like how you view things and and then like, it's, come on, the whole Xbox exclusive stuff. Like, you did, never really, you weren't the biggest fan of Xbox exclusives in general. So the yeah, thing is, like, is that besides like Fable and stuff. Yeah, out, yeah, outside of those. So the thing is, is that yeah, you never was for the Ap Activision deal. You were like, you know what I mean? It was these. So, but the problem is now is timing, right? You've always been nobody weren't paying attention, to, but now you're a lot bigger. Uh, you're on a platform that's a lot bigger, and all this stuff is going on. So now you're just being grouped into it, even though you've consistently been on like that same wave for a, a better half of almost ten years now, if mm -hmm. not ten years. And that's the part that's annoying is if you go and look at my channel or you watch my videos for a couple weeks, you'll see that I'm not doing that. I talk about the positives, I talk about the negatives, I talk about everything. Uh, you know, but the problem is, is people want, they want someone to, to believe in. They want like a safe haven and yeah. that's not my channel. Yeah. I mean, yeah, that's what people, people want. And, and the thing is, is that we're running out of, we're running out of people 
to go to. Like, you know, Diller's been gone for a while. Um, uh, we, I know people are still watching, you know, obviously X and C with, with Cole and Mag. And Mag sometimes be ticking people off. Um, you got... Do me uh, a favor while uh, you're talking. Put on your Twitter, uh, ask for a couple questions about Hellblade for Planet Xbox. Ah, oh, nah. Let me just check. Let me. I think there, there's actually I got some questions to ask because I'm about. Oh, okay. I gotta get ready to shut this down anyway because I got, I got, I gotta be up early and I gotta clean my dog. Like uh, today, I made a, a video that said Hellblade Two is the safest sequel you can have. I saw That's that. A fair, so it's a fair video. I never said anything bad. I actually recommended it to you if you liked Hellblade. But because I didn't do nothing but, you know, say everything Xbox ever produces is amazing, I lost five subs. <laughs> and that's what I've been dealing with the past couple months. I've lost over 300 subs in the past few months just because I have held Xbox accountable. Wow. Wow. All right. You know what? Let's get into, like, there was some questions on the last podcast we did, but we didn't get to them because I didn't see them. Um, so I am going to ask uh, some of the questions that came through. So but that some was of the, with Tim, wasn't yeah, it? It was with Tim, but some of them were, well, I, I just just because I owe them the, the answers to some of these questions. Um, uh, the OG said, this is about to be a certified classic. Shout out to the best spot. This is with the Tim Dog episode. Uh, OG says, put Alex on here, too. Okay. Jazzy Jefferson, Tim Dog, explain why you were stalking people at Best Buy and drawing a picture of oh Phil Spencer God. pretending it was your kids drawing mental illness? Question mark. Um, there was. Did they really expect us to ask him that? Yeah, like, <laughs> yeah. J Law says, "Do y'all think Game Pass has proven itself to be a failure, or is it unrelated to the current business decisions by Microsoft?" That's a good question. Is Game Pass a failure? BG I said it with concerning. emphasis like two weeks ago. He, he said Game Pass is a failure. Um, the problem is, is not enough casual people are are subscribing to Game Pass. Yeah, so it's being really, really devastating to them. It, I do think Game Pass is affecting the industry, yeah. and it's affecting Xbox more in particular. Yeah, but uh, you know, I think Call of Duty. You know, people want to talk about whether or not Call of Duty going in Game Pass is like going to affect the brand or not mm. i think putting call of duty in game pass one time is worth the experiment yeah um i would say it's especially I, black ops yeah i i don't think game pass is a failure uh it, it, however it hasn't had mass it, it's not a um it's not a mass uh it hasn't hit mass consumption yet it has it it's not available is not it's not ultra popular because the console isn't ultra popular um and that's what's really holding it back is xbox one needs to be a a, a, a competitive with their console sales and it needs a a, a call of duty to really uh, push them over uh j law says what is it going to take for microsoft to get back on track uh games good games better games yeah it's gonna take a mixture of really good games to like undeniable games <laughs> and better marketing effort and trying to sell your consoles any way possible sell that console um hustle and motivate says hey y'all what's up who's having a worse time this week drake or xbox management um, wow. Uh, I'm gonna say neither because they all the uh, they, they 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 both rich, right? So, um, Drake made so much money off all that nonsense. Like, you can argue on who won and who didn't win, they all won with the amount yeah. of engagement they had on Twitter. Yeah, absolutely. One uh, might have won more than the other, but the other one still won quite a bit. I could agree with that. All right, Attic, we're gonna get out of here. We uh hit the hour mark. Um, final any questions, any thoughts? Final thoughts. Uh, uh, what's uh? I mean, we we're now we're a couple weeks away from the showcase. Um, Hellblade is what they say it came and went. Um, so so what's up? What you got to say? What should we be looking out for? 
the game that I've been looking out for for the majority of the time, Avowed. I heard Avowed's I, the game that uh, I enjoy, want to play the most. Is it? Do you think it still comes out this year? Because yes. Okay. Okay. Um. I'm uh, Hellblade. Like I said, I I really like it. My favorite game so far this year. I think it's the best game so far this year. I am looking for it to avowed. Um, and, and ha- let me real quick. Hellblade isn't a bad game. It's just, in my opinion, uh, there's a lot of aspects, easily aspects. I don't know. I'm not a developer, but to me, a lot of like easy concepts that would have made the game a lot better. Understood. Understood. Um, I feel like this is going to be the same, the last of it. Obviously, I feel like Avowed is going to be a game where we're going to be a similar situation where it scores about like yeah. 81, 82. I'm probably going to love the shit out of the game, but people are going to either not like it because it's too bright and colorful. They're not going to like the the story. Uh, they're not going to like the storytelling. They're not going to. The gameplay is going to be outdated. Whatever they, whatever excuse it is, but I'm looking for something just just fun to play i don't like the games that have coming out come out recently hellblade like i said was different i feel like it was a fresher breath of air um but i'm looking forward to avowed i'm looking forward to the xbox game showcase i want to see how i really want to know how xbox is going to make the xbox gamer feel comfortable and feel good because all i feel like all they've been doing has been pleasing or trying to appease everyone else at the uh cost of us um so let's see how what happens there um Weapon will. I'll be there next week. I'll try to put out some videos, and um, I'm still now that Hellblade's done. I'm gonna try to get the 100% completion. I think I have like two achievements. It doesn't away. take much. I I think I have two achievements. I need to play the narrator thing. Yeah. And I need to find all the sigil stones. Yeah, the sigil stones. Yeah, I got two more sigil stones, and I think I'm good. Um, but the, the trees, though, I think the the tree is where I have a lot of those vacant, and that's the trees that hide behind the. The faces of like those mountain faces that you have to like uncover, um, but yeah, I'm gonna do that, and then I'm gonna uh, resume my uh, playthrough of the Tomb Raider series. I've been playing. I started with the 2013. I played that and beat that on PC on the hardest difficulty. Game Pass version is broke. The achievements don't work for some reason. Um, I'm now playing. I, I will be returning back to Rise of the Tomb Raider on the hard uh, difficulty. <coughs> Did you see that? Um, apparently. That one game, uh, the Eat on, Eat on Chronicle was overheating Xboxes. How? You, you I don't know. Chronicle? If you go look, yeah. If you go look on the the reviews of the game itself mm-hmm. on Xbox, like almost all of them are talking about it overheating their console. Wow. I I, I see. So some... maybe optimis optimization problem. Because I highly doubt that game. Is demanding yes, yeah, in any way, yeah, shape, or form. Yeah. I wouldn't even download that on Xbox. I'd download it on a Rogue Ally and play it there. Um, it seems like a good uh, handheld game. Um, all right, guys, man. Thank you guys for tuning in for playing Xbox. We will see you guys next week uh, for another episode. And then there's going to be a, quite a few things going on between for the game showcase. Because I feel like that's coming up. It's creeping up on us fairly quick. As always, guys, Xbox is the best box. I am the best bot. Good night or good morning if you're on the other side of the globe. We are out. Peace. Peace.